Welcome to today's Meet the Funder session where you'll learn more about the Recovery Communities Fund. The session's been delivered by Maddie Hubbard from Action Together. Over to you, Maddie. Thanks, Hayley. Hi, everyone. My name is Maddie. I'm the Rochdale Director for Action Together. And we just wanted to put together a session just to give a bit more information about the Recovery Communities Fund, but also to hear from some of the projects that were funded last year as well, because, you know, it's one of those that I think it can sound like quite complicated and actually like bringing to life the really wide range of projects that have actually happened under this fund can maybe help inspire some ideas from other groups as well. So just a bit of background, um, the funding for this comes from Rochdale Borough Council who received Section 31 grant funding for investment around substance misuse treatment. So the aim of it is to support the development and expansion of recovery communities and peer support networks. So the idea is networks of social connection, people who might face social exclusion because of substance or alcohol misuse, to have the opportunity to live healthy and fulfilling lives. So involvement in a community that supports their recovery, having you know, friends and connections and things that um, provide them with, yeah, uh, community support their recovery in an ongoing way. And obviously the voluntary sector are really well placed to do this. And there's a really wide range of groups already doing great work in this space. Um, and yeah, we just wanted to invite some of those groups along to speak about their projects from, from last year. So if I start with Dave, if that's all right. So David from Tackling Minds, would you be up for sharing a bit about what what your project idea was and, and how it's gone for the participants? Oh, and you're on, you're on mute, Dave. <laughs> Yeah, it's not the first time I've done that. Apologies. So, yeah, um, this is something that I was really passionate about um, coming from a background of addiction myself. You know, I've suffered um, a number of years on and off with alcohol addiction, um, being in and out of detox facilities and um, really struggled um, during my periods of recovery. Um, obviously, not knocking around in the same circles, in the so same social circles, Um and had a huge void that needed to be fill, filled. Uh, I got back into my fishing after years away from it and realized straight away the benefits that I was getting to be outside, be it in the, the green blue spaces, socializing, um, just keeping my mind active. If it was on the bank, if it was off the bank, um, trying to figure out my methods, what I've got to use when I'm out fishing nets, if it's watching YouTube videos, engaging in the many social media groups as well so i formed tackling minds um in the hope of helping others you know so as i say saw the benefits it was doing for myself or over medication over any talking therapy and yeah that's where tackling minds were born so the demand we've seen from organizations people wanting to volunteer has been unbelievable on tackling minds just goes from strength to strength so it was something I'm really passionate about. So when I saw this funding, it was just like, you know, this is, you know, if I can sort of set something up in the Rochdale area, which I thought would be, you know, would be quite easy, which to be honest, being connected in and around the drug and alcohol services, it, it really was on the demand again from people wanting to get involved was, um, was great to see. So the sessions have been unbelievable, you know, the only downfall really is this, that when the funding came to an end because we're getting bombarded still with phone calls. Is there any fishing on next week? So that's been a shame. But honestly, I can't like thank everybody enough for, for the actual opportunity for the funding. And fingers crossed we're successful again because, you know, everybody's really excited to get this off the ground again. So, yeah, just literally just positive all around. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Dave. That's great to hear. Um. Rob, is it right if we come to you next and hear about what Sanctuary Trust did with, with the grant? Yeah, no problem. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so what we did with Grant, or what our idea was, we put on a recovery event last year in the summer in Broadfield, uh, Broadfield Park, uh, where we had all agencies with stands sort of um, showcasing what they did. We had people sort of giving testimonies that were comfortable with doing that. Um, we had food and all things like that. So we thought it'd be brilliant to carry on and sort of carry on from what we've done there. Um, and we put that within the grant. We also put within it that we would like to sort of have the voice of lived experience feeding into sort of the homeless networks and other networks that we're at. 
because that voice is sort of really highly valued and missing in a lot of sort of my professional meetings that I go to. And so that was part of it as well. And we wanted to sort of really get out there what's on offer for people to access, as, as Dave's already said, with like social isolation, people's well-being, and just understanding that there is a life after sort of suffering from multiple disadvantage, whether that may be addiction, mental health, criminal justice, physical, whatever that may be. And there is a lot on offer in the Borough of Rochdale that's just never, ever joined up to sort of have it as good as it could be. So we put on the second um, recovery event, which we had in Chantler's Hall. I'm off the top of my head, and there's about 200 people. We tried a different vibe this time. It was more uh, theatre sort of based stuff. So we had the GM Jokers making a difference, Elephant's Trail, and they got up and sort of did sort of live theatre in that lived experience way of telling their story through theatre. Um, we also had testimonies again. This was off uh, people that have sort of been through services and now either volunteer or working in the homeless or drug and alcohol sector. Um, and from that, the legacy from the grant moment is that we have started, or they have started on their own individually, um, which I have sent you the bigger picture. This is its first magazine. Um, and again, this is group of people that have come from addiction and now working in services or volunteering in services um, and they're going to colleges doing presentations they're hoping to go to schools to other places um, in the council and all other sort of advice if you like of sort of telling their story um, and i think it's a good lens to have because we concentrate on people that are still sort of in the problem quite a lot these are people that are sort of found the solution so can see it from both sides of how it affected them when they was there and how it can still affect them now. Um, so that's what we sort of did. It was quite a good success. We've had, we had a few Friday night meetings in the Rock as well, which was just, I think we played bingo once and just, just the general sort of stuff. So we're, we are putting for it again and we're hoping to sort of build on the bigger picture um, mm -hmm. and supporting them to sort of individually stand on their own because um, they're doing really, really well. Um, I think what's come, come out of that is it's showing, you've got that tangible evidence from someone who's just sort of coming out of services and volunteering to someone that's further along and working and then to people that we have in management that sort of come through that process. And I know for myself, the same as David, I mean, I might be development manager now for Sanctuary Trust. I've lived two lives in my lifetime. I've, I've had 12 prison sentences in a heroin crack addiction for 20 years. I've been clean for a number of years now. So you can see that progress and there's, there's no ceiling on what people can achieve. And I think sometimes in services, there's a ceiling on what people can achieve. And we're sort of getting out there that, you know what, there's no ceiling, anything is possible. And this is what's on offer and this is how you can do it. So that's roughly what we're doing in that show. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, and great to hear that groups are thinking of putting an application again, just to say that we've actually got twice as much money in the pot this year as we did last year. So we would obviously encourage all groups last year to go for it, but also there's lots more capacity to fund new groups to be part of the fund as well, which is which is really exciting. And grants are for up to five thousand pounds as well as a bit of bit of context. Right, next, I'd love to come to Suzanne, if that's okay. You up for sharing what you did at Domain Community Centre? Hi, um, yes, yeah, so I'm the manager at Domain Community Centre, and over the last five years, we've been supporting peer-led um, support groups for alcohol and um, substance abuse. So with our groups, we tend to with support groups, we know that they, they don't have the finances to pay for a space that we would normally charge. So we offer it on a sort of a donation basis. So they get the space, they get the privacy and they have access to all our facilities, um, but they have this secure space. And um, the funding really helped us sort of in a really difficult time coming through a pandemic and obviously rising bills, rising costs. We lost a lot of groups through the pandemic people not everybody came back at the start so the funding really sort of helped us cover the cost of the group um uh pay for sort of the the old vets and things like that allowing them to just continue as normal which was really nice because we know that the impact that these groups have um on the community and having them like at the center is really important um i sort of drop in once a month just to like touch base with 
the people that are, they don't like being called leaders, but they're the ones that sort of like take ownership of the group. So I just kind of drop in to sort of say hi and see if there's any issues, anything that needs to be addressed. Um, and we always sort of like say that, you know, they love coming to the centre, they love having something, whether it's local or they travel, because we do come, have them coming from all over the area. Um, and, you know, from Rochdale, Wigan, everywhere, they sort of come to this meeting because there aren't that many. Um, when I've looked into it, there's not not too many. We have opened more over the over the last 12 months. And, you know, the when I came in, they were celebrating one of the one of the attendees was 10 years sober, uh, 10 years clean. And, it, you know, he said, like, it, the group is the main driving force behind his sobriety. Um, and without it, he said he wouldn't have made it to this point, which was just, like, incredible. And they were having, like, this lovely little, we having, like, a little, little party. And I got some cake, which is always, like, usually appreciated. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they run, they're there every week, 52, 52 weeks a year. Um, we open at Christmas for them because we know that that's a really, really important time for them. A lot of them have said that this group is like their family. They've lost family through addiction, um, through things that have happened. That their fam, you know, they haven't been able yet to reconnect with their families. So this group has become like their their core family. And at Christmas, it's a really difficult time where a lot slip back into addiction. Said, or back into old habits. Um, but having the group there at Christmas is really really important. Um, so we always make sure that we are open. Um. At Christmas for them at any times so that that are proving very difficult. So yeah, the funding just really helped us keep going and keep them in the centre. We'd never sort of say that they, you know, we'd never put room rent up or ask them for for more because they're more important than that. But obviously, having the extra funding to keep the centre sort of stable is really important. So yeah, thank you. Brilliant, thanks, Suzanne. And yeah, great to hear the stories from the group as well. Oh, so finally, it coming to is it Michael or Deborah from which one of you is gonna share about Recovery Republic and what you did? Or it, it it'll be Michael actually on this particular one. But I'm sorry for for being double trouble, but I just wanted to link in because I haven't heard about the other um the other projects and and as was said at the beginning of the session, it is inspiring and it, my my thoughts are, are cogging away thinking about you know what's in the art of the could we, should we, yes, we possibly can. Um, so I benefited from that. But in terms of specific feedback on the project itself, I'll, I'll hand to Michael because this was his baby. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, over to you, Michael. I think you're on mute. Yes. Uh, we started um, 12 years ago when I think there was very, very little other than AA and NA for uh, people with substance misuse. And also people who had detoxed and were going for recovery, um, there was no support for them whatsoever. And so that's how it got started. And what we've done since then is we've listened to people and we haven't led them, we've supported them in what they want to do. And some of our earliest people have got dramatically better, as have a couple of uh, people that have spoken here today and have come back and have started helping others, which is wonderful to see. Some people have got better and are just living their normal lives as mums, dads, grandpas, uh, grandmas, etc., which is also wonderful to see. So slowly the the Recovery Republic has become, a, if you like, a psychosocial centre where lots of things happen, but we haven't forgotten our origins and we continue to house NA and AA and um, we continue to look after people who have problems of addiction that wish to be helped. But we draw a line at those that are bang at it. We send them to the services for those that are bang at it and we help them in their period of recovery. Deborah. Yeah, I mean, we we are a learning organisation, like others are, and we're, we're a listening organisation. So 
a few of the things that we had funding, one of which includes the fully human program of, of development. And that builds on a number of programs, one of which, <clears throat> excuse me, being beliefs and values. And that's been, we found that that's been incredibly important and valuable because if people don't, um, they often don't when they're entering that recovery phase, often don't believe in themselves and value themselves. And that's a really important step along the recovery pathway, you know, believing and valuing that you, you can do this, you are worthy of this. And then when you've done that, then other people do that the same. So Fully Human as a programme builds on that and it builds on um, theories which indicate that you have to know, well, you have to be fully human and know that the, the, the flaws of the house really to be in full human. So you, you have to deal with the issues in recovery and surrounding the body. You have to deal with the issues surrounding the mind and you also have to deal and support with the issues surrounding the spirituality. And that's not necessarily a religious spirituality. It's, you know, where do I fit in this space? Do I deserve to fit in this space? Um, so it's very much a, a sort of probing reflective session um, or, or program of sessions but it but it does evaluate well um, people do seek us out specifically for it we've done a number of public events one in Queen's Park and one in the Civic Centre in Haywood where we've spoken to people about fully human and other programs um, and that does I'm sure others have, have recognised that as well. So sort of just being in places where people are with those sorts of messages where people aren't walking through and into an organisation and we are mindful that the building has got recovery of the public over it and that might put some people off because oh I saw Fred next door walking into recovery of the public. But having been able to invite people to have those conversations where they're just doing normal and everyday things has has opened their their minds and their understanding that the, the, there are things out there to support them um we we haven't got a, a a prescription neither should we have but we have got um a sort of social prescribing prescription that that goes along the lines of we're here to help whatever it is that you need and want we will help you along your recovery journey and what we know is when you flop off the end of detox services and you've actually lost your crutch, for want of a better word, um, and apologies to, to those who've got lived experience, I might not be describing this in a sensitive way, and if I'm not, please tell me, but when you flop off that end, it's, it's, we found that it's that support to actually just live a normal life again that the skills aren't there uh, the conditioning is a, a one of sort of, of, of addiction and abuse so that's been where our efforts have been been placed um and yes like others would we're, we're grateful for that funding to give us that space because we all of us i'm sure we're very we're very cheap to keep in terms of what we what we do but there are costs incurred so having that ability to, to bid for funding pots like this is is just massive and, and what organizations like ours and yours can do with five thousand pounds or up to five thousand pounds is is immeasurable you wouldn't get a hit replacement for that but the the impact that what we do makes on people's life is is immeasurable um so yeah that was a bit of a garble but no that was great thanks deborah and i think you really eloquently brought to life what this is trying to fund you know about people getting to live a good life and have friends and have like a sense of purpose and connection and yeah the projects really like demonstrate really well how many different directions that can take you know that we're not tied down to there being one approach that you do this you can really be creative and flexible in what people want what they need what will be fun for them you know and to have things as varied as an NA group to a fishing group to a music group or what, you know, have events that raise the profile of this used through theatre 
all of that is exactly the kind of things that you know we need in the borough and that in our communities um so yeah really appreciate all of you coming to share that and i think we're gonna stop film stop recording and then we'll give space for any questions <laughs>